Hey guys, let's introduce ourselves to statistics. What is statistics? Well, it is of course a branch of mathematics. And statistics is basically the study of data. The study of data. There is a series of steps which occurs when we are collecting data for any purpose, whether it is for some research or whether it is for some policy. And after we've collected that data, we organize it, we summarize it, we analyze that data. And according to that analysis, we take decisions accordingly. Now, let me just show you the flowchart of what steps exactly take place when we are collecting data, right from co collecting data to making decisions on that data. So this is our flowchart, right from selecting our data down to making inferences based on that data. Now I'm going to discuss each and every step one by one. Number one, selection of data. Now to begin any research project, it is absolutely important to select your data. Now what is the difference between population and sample? Population is the entire lot where you can get your data from but the sample is actually a subset of the population. It is more manageable to get your data from a sample rather than a population. In fact, it is absolutely impractical or maybe impossible to get all your data from the population. For example, let's say you're conducting a research on A-level students in Karachi. Now you know it is absolutely impossible to get information, to get data from each and every student from every school in Karachi. Karachi is way too big and your population is way too large and it is impractical to study all the A-level students in Karachi. So this is where the sample comes in. You will take a sample. For example, let's say you take 20 students from each school and not even each school. Let's say you choose 10 schools out of as many schools there are in Karachi. Let's say you choose 10 A-level colleges in Karachi and from each college you will pick 20 students, 10 AS students and 10 A2 students. That is how I've made my sample space and with the sample space, I'm going to conduct my research. I'm going to apply all of these steps to that research. And I will make my inferences based on this data from the sample space. Not only is a sample space more of a manageable way of going about things, but it's basically a more efficient use of time. Because as I said, it is impossible. It is impossible to get data from an entire population. And now how is sampling done? There are various methods of sampling. There are various ways of choosing your sample unbiasedly. For, ex for example, let's say you have a class of 50 students and you need to select 10 students from that class. Well, let's say that we put everyone's ID number in a basket. We write it on a chit and we put it in a basket and then we choose 10 chits from that basket at random. That is one way of choosing a sample of 10 students. And this sa sampling method is called simple random sampling. Apart from this, there are many other ways of sampling. However, you will not need to study this in this course. Now that we've selected our data through the method of sampling, let's talk about collection of data. What is collection of data? Well, collection of data is basically, now that we've selected our sample, we need to collect data from the sample. We need to get information out of this sample. For example, we are looking at the O-level scores of these A-level students. So it can be done through interviews, it can be done through questionnaires, but whatever sample we have through those people or through that sample space, we will collect our data, the information that we need in order to continue our research. This is what collection of data is. And now comes organization and representation of data. So as you know, as you know that the data that we collect, the data that we collect from the students or from any other sample space that we've collected data from, the data is in its rawest form. The data itself is called raw data. You have data in a very messy form and you need to organize this data. You need to represent this data so that we can further analyze what's going on with the data and we can make predictions based on that data. So the way to organize and represent data, there are many different ways, whether you make a frequency table, whether you make bar charts or histograms or pie charts, these are all different methods of representing data. And that is exactly what we will be learning in the upcoming videos, how to represent and organize data. We will learn frequency tables. We will learn how to form histograms and bar charts. So this is the third step. And now we come down to summary of data. Summary of data. Now that we've organized our data, we've represented it, can we summarize our data in a certain way? 
we can calculate the measure of central tendency, we can measure their dispersion, we can identify what is the smallest, what is the highest value. All of these figures, all of these values give you, gives you a summary of the data. It gives you an outlook of what's happening with the data that is presented in front of you. For example, central tendency is calculating the mean, median, and mode of a data. These are all measures of central tendency. The meaning of each of these terms, as well as how to find out these values, will be, will be discussed in the further videos. Measure of dispersion will also be discussed, and how to find out the smallest and highest value. Well, the meaning is obvious. You're just looking at the highest value of your data and the smallest value, just so that you get an idea of the range of values of your data. This is basically the summary of data. And now let's come down to the fifth step, which is analysis of data. Analysis of data is basically observing trends in our data. We get meaning from our data and we can also use probability. We can calculate probability, which will basically help us with future predictions. It helps us understand data because probability defines the level of certainty and uncertainty of our data. So we can use these probability values to make further future predictions as well as help helping us understand more about the data. And now the last step, the last step, which is inference. Inference based on process data. So now that we have all our data processed, it is organized, represented, summarized, as well as analyzed. Now we need to make some inference based on this process data, which is basically making decisions and making policies. So this is the absolute final step of what we do with the data that is processed. And this is how policies are formed, whether it is in the corporate sector, whether it's in the government sector. This is how we use data to finally make decisions and make policies based on the data we collect.